po nyo po malakpak kahit gano'n na lang na intindihan na po namin yon. And uh, to begin our afternoon, we'd like to call on the President, the National President of the Sangguniang Laiko ng Pilipinas, Brother Roquel Ponte, if you could uh, unmute yourself and welcome us uh, and lead us into the opening prayer. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we'd like to welcome all of you to this uh, first conversation for the year 2021. So on behalf of uh, Bishop Roderick Pabilio and the entire Sangguniang Laiko ng Pilipinas Board, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, and in our first offering, I think we have prepared a special conversation for all of us. No? And I believe... Uh, uh, the challenges that we faced last year also gives us hope for this year because uh, uh, we will celebrate uh, a lot of milestones and, and some of them would be the 500 years of our uh, anniversary as a Philippine church. You know? And so these reasons to celebrate gives us hope for, for this year. It might be a busy year, but we thank the Lord for giving us uh, the gift of life uh, the gift of uh, the faith that, uh, that has been brought to us uh, 500 years ago, and also the gift of, uh, of uh, oneness in the church that fosters this gift of faith. So this afternoon, I'd like to uh, uh, open this uh, uh, event with a simple prayer. And we all say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for giving us this special day once again. And as we look forward with hope in our hearts for a more beautiful uh, year that is ahead of us, we know that you will accompany us and journey with us. And so we entrust to you this uh, whole afternoon's proceeding. And we pray that uh, this initial event will further lead us deeper into our uh, journeying with you, with the whole Philippine church and together with the, the Filipino lady. And so we commend the rest of the afternoon, especially our guest, uh, resource speaker for, uh, for today. And we just entrust everything, Lord, uh, to the mighty and holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and St. Joseph. And all this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So welcome once again. Thank you, Jun. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Brother Roquel. And at this point, we'd like to uh, call our uh, Apostolic Administrator for, uh, for the Archdiocese of Manila to uh, give his opening message regarding this uh, national consecration to St. Joseph. Let's welcome His Excellency, Bishop Roderick Babilio of the uh, Archdiocese of Manila. Sandali lang, Bishop, pinahanap ko yung inyong... Uh, Pwede, kay, meron, pwede niyo pong i-automatic unmute na lang siya sa inyo. Sige po, yun ang hanap ko po. Asensya na po kayo at uh, na... Bisha, pakisubukan pong i-unmute ulit, please. Okay. Sorry okay. Pa. Okay, so thank you very much for coming to join us in this, uh, um, our 
uh, conversation. And I see that Father Donald is already here with us, so I will not take long. I just want to welcome you again to this conversation, and hopefully this can uh, uh, push us on to increase our devotion to St. Joseph. This is another special thing of this year, the year of St. Joseph, and we are all excited to consecrate ourselves and to make St. Joseph really part of our families and uh, part of uh, the expression of our faith. May St. Joseph, who guarded and guided the Holy Family, also guide the Church, especially during this time. So welcome to you all to this conversation that we are having. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And at this point, uh, it is my honor to introduce to you today our guest speaker, uh, who is in Texas right now, where I think the time is 12 midnight. And he is the author of 14 books and is now the most sought after international speaker on the year of St. Joseph, <laughs> having written a very powerful book called Consecration to St. Joseph. He's the Vicar Provincial of the Marian Fathers of Immaculate Conception, Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy Province. And without further ado, and thank you in advance for giving us this opportunity. Let's all welcome the very Reverend uh, Donald Calloway, M-I-C-S-T-L. Good afternoon, Father Don. Good evening. Good afternoon. Yes. Good, good morning for me. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for letting me be here. Can you hear me okay, June? Yes, uh, we can yes. hear you. I'm just okay, looking fantastic. for your for your Maybe I need to change my okay. video. No? It looks okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Your Excellency, Archbishop Roderick, very much for the introduction. Um, I'm honored to be with you because I consider myself an honorary Filipino. If I could be any other culture. I would want to be a Filipino because I love the Filipino people. What, and I'm going to tell you why. Maybe you know, maybe you know, because if you're familiar with my story, you know that I would not be a Catholic without the Filipinos. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. And then I'm going to transition to talk about St. Joseph and why right now is the time of St. Joseph. And I'm going to want to encourage you to make this complete consecration for all the Philippines to St. Joseph, because we really need him right now, because the world is a mess. There are so many problems, and we need a good father. So let me back up, because if you don't know my story, I'll just tell you a little bit. So I was not raised Catholic. I was not raised anything. My parents were not religious, and we had a lot of problems when I was a young boy. And my mother, she remarried several times. She was not religious. She didn't believe in God. And I, when I grew up in the United States, when we were living in the United States, I began to do a lot of bad things, a lot of drugs, a lot of immoral activity. And then my stepfather was in the Navy and we moved to Japan. And when I went to Japan, things got really bad, really, 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 really bad. And I ended up running away from home in Japan and getting involved with the, the Yakuza, which is the Japanese mafia. And I was only 15 years old when I was doing this. And I was running drugs for them and all kinds of crazy activity. And I was wanted by the police, even by the international police. And it was a disaster. It was a complete nightmare of a situation. But through this craziness, my mother, she had a friend in Japan. And this woman, guess who she was? A Catholic Filipino woman in Japan. She was married to an American uh, in the military. And this woman was very Catholic, very Catholic. And she said to my mother, a very strong, right? Strong Filipino woman. She said to my mother, you have to talk to a Catholic priest. That's what the Filipino woman said to my mother. And my mother said, why? Why do I have to talk to a priest? But the Filipino woman, she said, she didn't quit. She didn't stop. She said, no, you have to go talk to him. You have to talk to him. So my mother said, okay, fine. So she talked to this Catholic priest in Japan and my mother's life completely changed. She had a conversion, but she couldn't continue there in Japan because she had to leave the country because I was still 
I still was loose on, on the run. Well, I didn't know this. So my mother was not in Japan anymore. I eventually got caught by the, the authorities, by the police. I got thrown into jail. Then I got kicked out of the country of Japan. I came back to the United States and I went to two drug and alcohol rehabilitation centers. And then when I turned 18, um, I got thrown in jail in the United States. And I'll show you a picture. Okay. Now, I am not a narcissist. I'm working on my pride, but I do have a big picture of myself I want to show you <laughs> so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. This is when I was uh, 18 years old. Okay. If you can see it, hopefully I'm holding it correct. You can see it there. I hope. Okay. That was me. That's not a girl. That was me. So, um, I had a lot of problems. I was a wild man, you know, the, the crazy things that I was doing. And when I was living this crazy life, my mom, my dad, my stepfather, they became Catholic and they became super Catholic and they were praying the rosary every day. They were going to mass every day. They were praying novenas. They were praying to saints, they, all of this. And I had no idea what they were doing. I didn't want to be involved with it but they were very serious. And a few years after their conversion, I, after my crazy life, I ended up reading a book about the Blessed Virgin Mary that they had in their house, and it radically transformed my life. I mean, completely radical transformation of my life. I changed my life so fast. I cut my hair. I cut, got rid of my hair. I got a job. <laughs> I, my language became good, and I dressed like a normal person because I, I always dressed like very strange, and everything changed. And the crazy thing, though, is this. How? How did it happen so fast? From only reading the book? No, not from only reading the book. The first time that I went to a Catholic church was in Virginia, the state of Virginia. And when I walked in to the Catholic church, Guess who was in the Catholic Church? Nobody else in the church, but by the door that I came in the church, there was a pew, and there was only in the church five Filipino women. Five. <laughs> An army, right? So one of these women had changed my parents' life. Now God had to send me five <laughs> of them. So, and it was amazing because they immediately took me kind of as their their project, you know, they, they taught me how to pray the rosary. Oh, wow. It was unbelievable. They taught me about the stations of the cross. They taught me about Mama Mary, right? All the Filipinos love Mama Mary, right? And I, it was unbelievable. And I fell so in love with everything about the Catholic Church, everything. And so I said to the priest, I want to become a Catholic. And I had to go through the classes, of course, because I, I had nothing. And it took about, well, it took about six, it took about seven months because it was in the archdiocese of the military. It's kind of, it has a different way because it, it has, a, the bishop is always traveling around the world and it has a different system. So I had to go to classes every week for seven months and then I became a Catholic. But during that time, I was praying because I got my life back and I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? I want to do anything for you. Save my life. I, I love you. I love Our Lady. I love everything about the, the, the Catholic Church. What do you want me to do? And, you know, I, I didn't know. But one of these women, her name was Vi, she came up to me one day and she said, she was the, one of the Filipino women. She was the leader of this little group of women. And she said, you should become a priest. And I said, what? And she said, yes, the young people, they need a priest like you because the world, it's very difficult. And you can identify with them. You can help them. And I said, oh, I don't know. Me? I don't know about that. So I, I, can, I prayed about it. And I, I couldn't get away from it. I could not get away from it. And eventually I surrendered to that. And I ended up going to the Marian Fathers who are, are the promoters of divine mercy. Probably you know about them in the Philippines, right? They, they have the house in Mindanao, in Cagayan de Oro, there, um, the divine mercy shrine. I have been there twice, by the way, to the shrine. I've been to the Philippines four times. Um, the last time I was there, I was there for one month, and I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> it was so hot. 
Oh wow! And I ate, I, I overdosed on mango in Cebu. <laughs> it was a it was an incredible trip, an incredible trip. Um, so I'm so grateful for Filipinos because you are such a powerful people when it comes to loving the faith, having the devotions, being so alive and joyful with the faith. And I, I have been told that one tenth. Of all Filipinos, they don't live in the Philippines. They're in the world. <laughs> they're traveling. And wherever they go, they're bringing Catholicism. They're bringing divine mercy. They're bringing Mama Mary. They're bringing, you know, all of that. And I know this because think about it. The Filipino woman that changed my mom's life was in Japan. The Filipino women that changed my life was in the United States. They were not in the Philippines. So the power of your culture to do these good things and your prayers for sinners and and to for for conversion it 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 works it's very powerful and i'm grateful to you salamat po to you and your culture i am eternally grateful for filipinos so how did i come to love saint joseph well the filipinos <laughs> when i was in the church going i was going to church every day and i was praying with the rosary with the filipino women they showed me the inside of the church. They said, this is the statue of Mama Mary. These are the stations of the cross. These are the stained glass windows. And they said, this is St. Joseph, the statue of St. Joseph. And it was a beautiful statue. And I started to go every day uh, for my lunch break because I, I, got, I got a job. But for my lunch, I would go to church and I would attend mass. I, I wasn't receiving communion yet because I was not Catholic yet, but I was in the process. And so I would attend mass and then I would stay and I would go to the statue of St. Joseph. And I said to him, help me because I, I made a mess of my life. I, I messed up my manhood. I made a lot of mistakes. I have a lot of wounds. I have a lot of baggage. I have a lot of issues. And you are the man that God chose to be the father of Jesus, to, 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 to be the one who would act in the role of his father and you were the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you're like the best man. You, you have everything. You, you can help me to become a good man. And he did. And he still does. And that was a long time ago, right? I, I, I've been a Catholic now for almost 30 years. I've been a priest 18 years. So it was a long time ago, right? Um, but still, he helps me so much. So about four years ago, so many people in the United States were coming to me every day and they were saying father you know our our marriage is is terrible my my husband he is not faithful or our our children they don't go to church they hate the church they hate everything they want to destroy everything um what do we do father and i said to myself oh i mean i'm not padre pio i don't i can't read souls so i said uh, uh i pray for you i can help you in way you know but I felt like I, I wanted to give them something more, right? So I, I, I went to prayer, and in my prayer, I feel the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to bring Joseph to the people. Because right now, a lot of the problems in the world, not all of them, but a lot of them, there is a kind of a, a patricide happening, which means a killing of the fathers, not literally, but figuratively. The father role in, 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 in the world, in the family, in culture is being thrown out. So when you look at fathers today in, in the media, in the movies, in the TV shows and all of that, they're, they're the laughing stock. People make fun of them. Even the, the wife and the children, they mock the father in front of everybody. They, they, they laugh at him. And I learned, you know, in the United States, I don't know about the Philippines, but in the United States, more than half of all marriages end in divorce today. 52% and 25%. So one fourth of all children in the United States are not raised with a father. One fourth, 25% of all children. It, this is terrible. The, the effects of this, the fruit of this is not good. And so I, I, I felt the Holy Spirit saying, you need to take them to Joseph, the, the good father, because unfortunately, many people, they don't understand what fatherhood is today. Because today, you know, we have a lot of this gender ideology. People are confused what it what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, a, a husband, a wife, marriage, redefined in many cultures, right? Everything has changed. So 
I really felt strongly that the Holy Spirit was telling me, but I said, how? What do I do? What Do I just go to them and say, go to Joseph? <laughs> what, what do I do? I have to maybe give them something, you know? So then in my prayer, I thought to myself, okay, you know what? A couple centuries ago, a great man, a great saint, St. Louis de Montfort, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to come up with a method of consecration to the Virgin Mary to help people, to, to win people back to Jesus, to transform lives, because Mary is the easiest, fastest, and quickest way to Jesus. And he wrote a 33-day method to do this. That's the true devotion, right? A preparation for consecration to Virgin Mary. Powerful. Even the popes talk about it. St. John Paul II said it was one of the most amazing things he ever did in his life. So I said, hmm, I wonder if we can do this for St. Joseph. Not as a competition, right? No, of course, complimentary, because she is the mother, he is the father, and Mary is greater than Joseph. We know this, of course, right? But I said to myself, in a time of crisis, in families, in fatherhood, in, in marriages, uh, we need Joseph. And so I thought to myself, somebody probably already wrote this book. Maybe I don't have to write it. I can find it and translate it. Somebody can try, we publish it. So I, I asked a lot of friends. I even asked some Filipino friends. I said, did somebody write this book in your, in your country? And they said, no, Father. I asked Poland. I asked Croatia. I asked Mexico, Colombia, all around the world. Everybody said, no, no, Father, this doesn't exist. So I said, okay, and now I know what I have to do. I spent three years going around the world. Thank the Lord before coronavirus, when we could travel, right? And I got all the information, translating things from other languages that never appear in English before, from obscure convents in, in Malta, in all, all these places around the world. And the end result was the book, Consecration to St. Joseph. So I said to myself, then, you know what? This is going to be big. I know I have a very strong sense that this is going to be a very big thing for the church and for the world. I felt it 100%, convicted 100%. And so I said to myself, we have to do something bigger to prepare for this. So in 2019, because the book was officially published January 1st, 2020, right? Officially. So one year ago. So I said in 2019, we need to get the Pope to declare a year of St. Joseph because I, in my research, I discovered we have never had a year of St. Joseph. In 2000 years of Christianity, we have never had a year of St. Joseph. We have never even had a Pope Joseph. And I discovered that only, Joseph's name only got put into the mass in 1962. And that was only in one of the prayers. It wasn't until 2013, Pope Francis put his name in all of the Eucharistic prayers. All of this stuff with St. Joseph is new meaning fresh. It, it, it's only been happening in the last 150 years, like big movements. We have always loved St. Joseph from the beginning of the church, of course. And we had saints who, who tried to really, really showcase him, like St. Teresa of Avila and St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Francis de Sales and St. And Andre Bessette in Canada 100 years ago. But the last 100 years, things have been growing a lot. A lot. New feast day. St. Joseph the worker. Uh, we got the litany of St. Joseph approved. St. Joseph appeared in some apparitions, right? Our Lady of Knock and Fatima. He was at Fatima. So I said to myself, we need to ask the Pope to do this because this would be incredible if the Pope declared it. And I knew that Pope Francis has a love for St. Joseph. And so I said to myself, now is the time. And so I wrote a letter in 2019 in English, but the problem is that Pope, he doesn't know English that well. So I said to myself, hmm, so I have a friend, a priest in Argentina, because my community is in Argentina also. I said, will you please translate this letter into Spanish? And he did. And he said to me, Father, there is a bishop here in Argentina who's very good friends with the Pope. He is in Rome right now. And I know him. He's my friend. If I ask him, I can email him right now. If he is willing, if we email the letter, when he meets with the Pope, because, you know, the bishops, they go over to Rome about every five years to check in with the Pope, you know. Um, if he will give the letter to the Pope, hand it to him, right? Hand to hand. And I said, oh, this would be fantastic. 
Fantastic. So he asked, and the bishop said yes. And the bishop was Bishop Hector Zordan from the uh, diocese in, in Argentina. He gave it to the Pope. And they talked about my letter. And we have the pictures because uh, the La Servitore Romano, you know, they, they take pictures when you meet with the Pope and you can buy the pictures. So we bought the pictures when they're they are talking about my letter. But I didn't hear anything back. So I thought, mm, maybe he's not going to do it. I don't know. So I just kept praying. So I said to myself, okay, uh, in the United States, I'm going to write a letter to every bishop and ask them, beg them, please, for your diocese, for your people, for your parishes, for marriages in your diocese, please declare a year of St. Joseph in your diocese. Because as a bishop, you, you have the authority to do this. Please, I, I beg you. And I got 12 of them to do it. And more were interested. And I was so happy. I said, oh, this is wonderful. We have so many people going to St. Joseph. And my book um, is it, it came out on January 1st. So I was, I was so happy because they were saying, okay, we declared a year of St. Joseph. Give us the book. We want to consecrate our diocese, our parish, the families, prayer groups, men's groups, youth groups, all of this. So I said, oh, this is wonderful. And then I heard some friends in Rome talking. And they said to me, Father, there is a lot of talk in Rome. And I said, uh oh, <laughs> and they said, no, it's good, but we don't know exactly what, but something, we think something is coming. And, you know, sometimes in Rome, like any group, right, things leak out, something leaks, somebody, you know, has a conversation they shouldn't, and it, the news gets out, but it didn't, it didn't get out. December 8th, as you know, I'm not telling you what you don't know. I woke up in, in, in America, and it was already, you know, uh, maybe lunchtime in Italy. And one of my friends, a woman who lives there, she's a reporter. She, my phone had messages when I woke up and I was like, wow, she sent me a lot of messages. And she said, can you believe it, father? Are you in shock? And I said, what are you talking about? Cause I did there were so many messages. I just read the first one. So I wrote back, what are you talking about? She said, he did it. He did it. And I said, he did what? And she said, he, the Pope, he declared a year of St. Joseph. And I said, what? I said, what? So I was, oh, December 8th, 2020 was probably one of the best days of my life. I was so happy. I can't describe to you how happy I was because now I don't have to write letters to bishops. <laughs> the Pope did it, everything. <laughs> he did the whole world, you know? So I, I was like, wow. And the book was available in English and Spanish. So the book, I felt like the Pope was my agent. <laughs> you know, it was like my book went off the charts, you know? And I was so happy. And now the book, as you know, um, is going around the world. And the demand for this is incredible uh, because the book, it has an imprimatur from my bishop in, in Ohio, you know, where I live. Um, and it has endorsements from cardinals, bishops, theologians, you know, Scott Hahn, theologians, these great, you know, minds. And um, now it will be available in 15 languages in probably about one month around the world and more are coming the request we we can almost not keep up with the amount of people who are contacting us the phone never stops ringing and the email i get about 200 to 300 emails a day um from people so it's incredible and of course one of those i fully expected it no surprise from the philippines because not only are you a people in love with mary right that's what the pope has said about you that you love mama mary uh, you're also a people of Joseph. I know this because the Filipinos I know in the United States, they love St. Joseph and they pray to him. They pray novenas to him. They, they ask him for his intercession. Um, and now I know you good people, June and so many others that you're, you're, you're going to be printing the books. You're going to be getting everything out for the Philippines to do like a, a national consecration. My friends, do you know how pleasing this is to Jesus and Mary? Because St. Joseph, he has been the mystery man. He's been the best supporting actor in Christianity. We don't have one word from him in the New Testament. But without him, Jesus and Mary could not fulfill their mission. Joseph saved Jesus from a madman, Herod, when he wanted to kill babies, right? Joseph is the most pro-life saint that we have. He is the father of Marian devotion. He is the first one to say to Mary, my lady. He, he is the, the so great. and. For so long, he has been in the shadow, right? But he's been saved for us for this time, right now. 
You know, can you imagine what St. Teresa of Avila or St. Andre Bessette or St. Jose Maria Escrivá, who had a great love for saints, so many saints, what they would have done to live in a year of St. Joseph? But they didn't see it. But we, we have it. We have it. And today, I think maybe it's probably, well, no, we're on the same day now. I think today is day 66, I think, or 67 for the year. of Every day I'm counting because I'm so happy. I'm like, when we get to the end, I'm, I'm going to feel like an abandoned child, I think, <laughs> because it, this is such a great year for me. It really, really is. And I'm so happy that you are taking the initiative to bring this devotion, to bring this message, to bring this consecration to the people of the Philippines, because I know that not only will it affect your country, because I know I've heard things that Philippines is having a difficult time, I know, right now. So so much of what's happening in the West is also happening in the Philippines, right? I know this. I hear it from many, many people. And I know also that there's a lot of people in the Philippines right now who are going through a lot of difficulty when it comes to employment because of the coronavirus. This is happening around the world. Who is the patron saint of workers? St. Joseph. Right now, he, he, we can go to him for everything, for hope, for peace, for conversion, for all of these, to take away our fears, our anxieties and stress, and, and to bring us closer to Jesus and Mary. And I know that when you do it in the Philippines, the fruit is not only going to be in the Philippines. As I said, the Filipinos, one-tenth of you people are not in the Philippines. They, they, they live in Japan, and, and they live in the United States and in Canada. And, and all over the world, and they're going to spread this everywhere, everywhere. I've already had Filipinos contact me from the United Arab Emirates, because usually so Filipinos, you know, wherever they go, they're, they're, they tend to be in the medical field, a lot of them, right, doctors or nurses, and so they're working in really out-of-the-way places, even in Alaska. I was in Alaska one time, in the north of Alaska, and there was a, a, a family of Filipinos. I say, how'd you get here? to Alaska. And they said, we're doctors. I said, oh, of course. <laughs> right? My friends, I know that what you're doing is going to be tremendous. And it's going to bring about so much good fruit for you, for your families, for your children, for your grandchildren, for the parishes, for the diocese, because we need this message right now. And I believe that the Holy Spirit, through the church, through the Pope, is saying to everybody, now is the time. Now is the time to go to St. Joseph. And the Pope wrote a beautiful letter, which I know the, the Oblate Father of St. Joseph is going to be speaking about later. I love the Oblates of St. Joseph. We have beautiful members here in the United States as well. Beautiful, beautiful religious community. I love them. If Probably if I could join another religious community, it would be the Oblates of St. Joseph. That letter that the Pope wrote is a beautiful letter. It's a very nice letter. And the name of it, right? Patris Corde, with the Father's heart. What a beautiful title. And now we have ways to get plenary indulgences. Our Heavenly Father is spoiling us with mercy. He wants to, to come with so many graces for us in these difficult times. And the way is to ask St. Joseph. Because he, you know, I discovered something in my research that was fascinating to me. The name Joseph etymologically, meaning the root of it, it means increase. So St. Joseph is the increaser. He is going to increase your relationship with Jesus. He's going to increase your relationship with Mama Mary. He's going to increase your virtue, increase your holiness. Yes, that's what a good father does. And he's such a good father that we're going to feel his protection. We're going to, you know, know his, the comfort of such a good father. Because that's what he did for Jesus and Mary. That's what he did for them. And that's what he wants to do for us. Because I think it's important to remember that we have the Virgin Mary as our spiritual mother. And we have St. Joseph as our spiritual father. And I think that this is very pleasing to Jesus. And he is saying to us, yes, now is the time for you, me to introduce you to the man that I love. The man that I called father. Imagine that. God called this man father. When Jesus walked this earth, he, he obeyed him. He listened to him, his instructions. He learned from him. He worked with him. What a blessing. What a great man. And now it's our time as brothers and sisters of Jesus to do the same thing, to do the exact same thing. And so, my friends, I'm going to be praying for you. I really am, especially 
from March 30th to May 1st, when many people there are going to be doing this consecration, I'm going to pray for you, all of you here in this group, and for the, the, the archbishops, the bishops, the cardinal, for, for everybody who is participating, that this will be something that will renew the Philippines, renew the church, renew the parishes, renew marriages, bring about conversions, because this is the time of St. Joseph. Salamat po, my friends. God bless you. Thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat, Father Don Calloway. Uh, my our friends, ito po, this is a challenge that uh, Father Don is uh, issuing to each and every one of us to really take hold of this uh, uh, the spoiling grace that God is spoiling us with His mercy and that we need to really uh, take this on and really receive the grace that the, that the Father is giving us through the, the wonder of St. Joseph. And Father Don, we just want to say thank you to you for really uh, dedicating your life to this uh, devotion and to tell you also that after the, um, the um, um, May 1 consecration, we still have a, a series of other consecrations to happen culminating on December 8th, which is a national consecration of families. So we Fantastic. will be doing something in order for our families aside from the fathers and individuals for families to really come together and consecrate ourselves. And hopefully uh, through, of course, the, the, the direction of our uh, chairman of the Episcopal Commission, he does not want things to just happen in 2021. He wants this to be a, a continuous work of grace to the point that he wants uh, um, to to uh, set up institutions or movements on men of St. Joseph, have labor desk in every diocese, come up with different uh, uh, events that could serve as a legacy uh, so wow. that the Philippines will continue to grow in this devotion, not only in terms of a spiritual one, but that one which would affect society. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. I know that your time is uh, very, very limited. But uh, I again would I would turn it over to Bishop um, Broderick Pabilio just for some final words before you say goodbye to us <laughs> because we know that you are very sleepy at this time already. <laughs> so I've asked um, Bishop to unmute. So okay, uh, Father Donald, thank you very much. No, for your encouraging talk and uh, and for your witness, also the witness of your life. And we can see the power of grace that has worked in you. You can also say together with St. Paul, no, it was because of the grace of God that I am what I am. Now, thank you very much. And uh, we will uh, hopefully keep in touch. And as uh, Brother June has said, we will continue on uh, this devotion, not only uh, in uh, the practices of piety, but also in families and also in the field of the social uh, aspect of our life, especially the field of labor, which is a very important field, especially in our country. And I'm sure St. Joseph will be with us. Thank you very much for taking time. It's still a big sacrifice for you to stay what? up. <laughs> Before you leave, Father Don... Any, anything for the Filipinos, Archbishop. Anything for Filipinos. <laughs> Before you leave, Father Don, we just would like to acknowledge the uh, generosity and support and the work of Ambassador Howard D. Ambassador Howard D., who is the, the chairman of the Assisi Development Foundation and also the Marian Solidarity, has really made this thing as a, as, in a way, as his uh, work for this, for this year. And that he, he's the one who made the uh, proposal to the Catholic Bishops' Conference and mm -hmm. is now reaching out to all the bishops and priests so that your book, your oh. book will be in the hands of all our bishops and all our priests and so that it would really be a national consecration to St. Joseph. So, Ambassador Howard D., I, I think you are with us, or maybe Angie D., and the people of the Marian Solidarity. Thank you. Thank you very much also. Yes, thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Angie. Very grateful. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yung po ang mahirap sa isang live na talakayan.
pag paalam na hindi mo alam ko paano sabihin mong ah ah sige oh, bye bye okay so but uh, we are really very very happy to to have this time with Father Don Calloway and uh, but we know that it is a challenge to each and every one of us that to make this consecration really meaningful we really need to prepare our hearts kailangan po maihanda natin ang mga puso natin and that is why through the book sabi po ni Bishop Pabilio uh, hindi natin ipinapa uh, laganap itong librong to para basahin ang sabi po ni Bishop Pabilio pinapalaganap natin ito para gamitin we will have to use it every day in order to prepare ourselves for 33 days and we hope to get to know more Saint Joseph get to love him more so that on May 1 okay we can make a very simple consecration to Saint Joseph but in our hearts we have known him to be our spiritual father at this point po um my time is 241 baka lang po meron kayong gustong uh, Itanong muna because we will be proceeding to uh, the next portion of our afternoon, which is a presentation of Father Jason and Daya, uh, who is the uh, provincial of the uh, provincial superior of the Oblates of Saint Joseph. But uh, for the meantime, if I could uh, just engage you with one advertisement, so please stay with us. We're just going to share with you uh, our promotional teaser for Walk for Life. Sandali lang po. everyone, the year 2020 will go down in history as a year of profound change. But moving on, we look forward to 2021 with renewed hope. For the Catholic Church in the Philippines, 2021 ushers the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity. This is a testament to the resiliency of the faith of Filipinos. The LICO, in solidarity with the different national lay organizations and the diocesan councils of the Leyte, has themed its commemoration Celebrate as One in 2021, a call to join hands in thanksgiving for the gift of Christianity, the gift of unity, and the gift of mission. Aside from this, the LICO also conducts an annual activity, Walk for Life, as it pursues its mission to defend life. Indeed, there are lots of reasons to be hopeful and joyful despite the lingering impact of the pandemic. While we continue in this time where physical gatherings are restricted, the LICO, in collaboration with the NCCA National Committee on Dance under the Dance Exchange Program, explored the possibility of carrying out this advocacy through an activity to be presented via the virtual platform. Thus, we bring you Walk for Life, celebration of life through dance. In this dance production, you will be treated to amazing dance performances conveying messages of joyful love, fraternity, value for family, care for the disadvantaged and the environment, expression of faith, devotion, and new forms of heroism. This show is for all of us whose unwavering trust and confidence in the compassionate God or Supreme Being will push us forward and become better versions of ourselves for a new generation and a better society. Following the Walk for Life celebration of life through dance is a Eucharistic celebration to be held at the Santissimo Rosario Parish Church, UST, to be celebrated by Bishop Roderick Pabilio. Let dance continue to be an effective tool of communicating our inner longings, aspirations, as well as the realities that can challenge the best of who we are as a people. We invite you to Walk for Life, Celebration of Life Through Dance, this February 20 at 2.30 p.m. 
at the Dance Exchange Facebook page and YouTube channel. And the LICO, San Pisumo Rosario Parish, and CCA, CBCP News, and IDFI Facebook pages. The Eucharistic celebration will be aired at 4 p.m. via the San Pisumo Rosario Parish Facebook page and Dance Exchange, LICO, and IDFI Facebook pages. We'll see you then. I hope excited na po kayo to uh, join us in this Walk for Life. Talaga pong nangayayat kami sa kakapractice ng mga dance namin dito. Eh. Talagang uh, uh, pinagplanuhan po talaga namin to. Joke po yun, hindi po ako kasali sa sayawan. Okay? But uh, definitely it will be a, a very, very uh, interesting time to really promote life through dance. Especially the people uh, organizing this would be coming from the uh, world-renowned uh, Shirley Halili Cruz, okay, ballet dance group. Mga kilalang kilala pong mga, mga instructors and mga dancers po, and also from the National uh, Council for Culture and the Arts po. At this point, my dear friends, we would like to proceed to the next portion of our afternoon, and we have invited the Provincial Superior of the Oblates of St. Joseph. Uh, he's a very young priest po, Ordained only on May 1. Ba, papuro May 1, ah. Pinag-uusapan na May 1, March 19. Of course, St. Joseph yan, eh. But he was ordained on May 1, 2005. And became a missionary in Brazil from 2007 to 2012. And by 2016, was already elected Vicar Provincial, which uh, later he assumed the office of the uh, Provincial Superior of the uh, Oblates of St. Joseph. I would like to uh, welcome this afternoon the uh, Provincial Superior of the Oblates of St. Joseph, uh, Father Jason and Endaya. Okay. Hello, good afternoon po. Magandang hapon po, Bishop, uh, Brother Ray Cubillo. Kay June, na <clears throat> naganyaya po sa akin and sa lahat ng membro ng Sangguniang Laiko ng uh, Filipinas. Actually, when Father Don Calloway was uh, sharing his experience, how he was able to be in love with this uh, Saint, Saint Joseph, I remember also my own story with my father till I considered Saint Joseph as my, my father. Because when I entered the seminary to 1993, my father died. Then I entered the congregation of the Old Age of St. Joseph. And since then, I consider St. Joseph as my father. I even wrote many poems on St. Joseph. I started collecting pictures on St. Joseph. Then uh, write articles on St. Joseph. Well, on my part, uh, Brother Jun told me to to discuss with you this important document of the church, which is very timely also. And just like what uh, Father Don Calloway had shared, he wrote to the Holy Father to spend a year in honor of St. Joseph. Last 2018, during the 17th general chapter of the congregation in Rome, our Father General summoned all the religious congregations of the world who invoked St. Joseph as patron and uh, uh, wrote a letter to the Holy Father asking to spend also a year at St. Joseph. And when he heard the news, it was a great joy for us, uh, the Oblates of St. Joseph, and even to, to other religious congregations who recognize St. Joseph as their patron. Well, kanina binanggit yung napakahalagang aklat to, for us to have a meaningful celebration of the year of St. Joseph. At hindi kaila sa ating lahat this very important apostolic letter, Patris Corde. Hayaan niyo pong ibahagi ko sa inyo. Ito, isashare ko sa screen. Uh, may PowerPoint presentation po ako para mas makapag uh, nilay po tayo ng sama-sama. So, with this Patris Corde, with the Father's heart, Una siguro, pag nilayan muna natin, what is the most remar remarkable trait of your father? 
Ano ang natatanging katangian ng iyong ama? Ako, ang isang katangian, hindi ko malilimot sa aking ama, is very hardworking. Laging sasabihin ng ama, gagawan ko ng paraan, maibigay lamang. Walang amang mabuti, masipag na ang gagawin ay para lamang sa kanyang sarili. Laging gagawin niya yon sa kapakanan ng anak, sa kapakanan ng, ng pamilya. So, the church has always most highly honor and praised Blessed Joseph next to the Blessed Mother. Yun ang tatanda natin. Joseph served the person and mission of Jesus Christ directly by exercising his own fatherhood. Dalawang bagay ang pwede nating maunawaan tungkol kay San Jose at ang lahat tungkol kay San Jose. Ang kanyang pagiging butihing ama o asawa ni Maria at ang pangalawa ang pagiging uh, butihing ama ni Jesus. So Joseph served the person and mission of Jesus directly by exercising his own fatherhood. God chose St. Joseph to be the spouse of Mary so that her son would have fatherly protection. Hindi natin maunawaan ng ganap ang pagiging pamilya kung walang ama, walang ina. At iyon, kaya pumasok na doon ang ating uh, patron, si San Jose. Patris Corde, this was written by Pope Francis, Pope Francis for the purpose O oh, bakit niya sinulat ito? In commemoration of the 150 years of the proclamation of St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. So, this is the declaration, this is a commemoration of uh, St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. To mark the occasion, the Holy Father proclaimed a year of St. Joseph from December 8, 2020 to December 2021. In the uh, in this apostolic letter, Patris Corde, Latin word meaning with a father's heart, Pope Francis describes Saint Joseph as a beloved father, a tender loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a father who is creatively courageous, a working father, a father in the shadows. Pangalawang dahilan, when the Pope wrote this apostolic letter, he wants to share to us his personal reflections on this extraordinary figure, St. Joseph. The Holy Father wrote Patris Corde against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. Magtataka tayo, bakit nakayana natin mula March hanggang December, mabuhay, hindi maburyo, hindi mainit, Dahil may mga simple, masigasig, nagsakripisyong tao para ma-deliver ang hinihingi nating mga online na pangailangan. At yun ang nakita ni San Jose. No? Maraming tao. How many people daily exercise stations and offer hope, taking care to spread, not panic, but shared responsibility. How many fathers, how many mothers, grandparents, and teachers are showing our children in small, everyday ways how to accept and deal with crisis by adjusting their routines, looking ahead, and encouraging the practice of prayer? How many are praying? How many are making sacrifices and interceding for the good of all? Each of us can discover in St. Joseph, the man who gets unnoticed, a daily, discreet, and hidden presence, an intercessor, a support, and a guide in times of trouble. St. Joseph, brothers and sisters, reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. That's why the Holy Father wants to recognize and give gratitude to them all. So, yung po ang dahilan kung bakit sinulat ito ni Pope Francis. 
Well, this apostolic letter, exhortation, contains the seven distinctive traits of a true father. Kanina, tinanong ko kayo, ano yung a remarkable trait ng inyong ama? So, una, the Holy Father says, una, yung a beloved father, then a tender loving father. Saint Joseph is an obedient father, an accepting father, a creatively courageous father, a working father, a father in the shadows. So, unawain natin ang bawat katangian nito ng pagiging ama ni San Jose. Well, the very purpose, aim of this apostolic letter, Pope Francis, was to increase our love for this great saint. Hindi magtatampo, hindi magagalit ang mahal na birhen sa atin kung tayo ay maglalaan ng taon para sa kanyang asawang si San Jose. I hope this year we will love more Saint Joseph. Then second, we are encouraged to implore his intercession sa lahat ng pangailangan. Ako masasabi ko po, malaking bahagi ng aking pagkapari sa kung ano ko ngayon bilang ublato, I owe it to St. Joseph. Sumusulat kami niyan ng aming petition, ng aming intention kay St. Joseph. At ipinapasok namin sa ilalim ng station ni St. Joseph. So, I encourage you, the Holy Father is encouraging us also to implore the intercession of St. Joseph. More than anything else, imitate his virtues and zeal. The Holy Father started this document with a father's heart, telling us that is how Joseph loved Jesus, the son of uh, Joseph. Maunawaan natin kung ano at sino si San Jose from the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, you know, which speaks most of Joseph, first and second chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and tell us very little, enough for us to appreciate what kind of father Joseph was and the mission entrusted to him by God's uh, providence. From the Gospel of Matthew, Naunawaan natin, he was a lonely carpenter. He was betrothed to Mary. Joseph was a just man. And he, uh, God's will was revealed to him through four dreams. He witnessed the adoration of the Magi from the Gospel of Matthew. We'll come to know better St. Joseph also from the Gospel of Luke telling to us also that he was betrothed to Mary. Joseph was able to carry out God's will as revealed to him by the angel, no? as revealed to him by what is written on the law. He beheld the birth of the Savior, the Messiah, in a stable. Joseph witnessed the adoration of the shepherds. But more than anything else, brothers and sisters, Joseph have the courage to become the legal father of Jesus. He gave the name revealing the angel to establish a relationship. No? Bagamat ipinaliwanag sa kanya na anghel ang, na ang lahat, ng anghel ang lahat, na ang dinadala sa sinapukunan ng mahal na birhen ay lalang ng Espiritu Santo. Pagkatapos noon, ginawa agad niya ang sinabi ng anghel. No, pinakasalan si Maria at siya ang nagbigay ng pangalan ng batang isisilang ni Maria. Bagamat hindi siya ang biological father, hindi inalis ng Diyos ang karapatan magbigay ng pangalan sa kanyang anak. At ang ama ang nagbigay noon to establish a relationship. So, in the temple, we have seen also from the scriptures, 40 days after the birth of Jesus, Joseph uh, spoused Mary, and Joseph, together with Mary, offered the child to the Lord and listened with amazement to Simeon's prophecy. Lahat na unawaan natin ito sa 
pahayag sa Biblia. No? Amazement to Simeon's prophecy, Joseph was there to protect Jesus from Herod. Joseph dwelt as a foreigner in Egypt after uh, after that go, going back to his own country. Then he led a hidden life in the tiny obscure village of Nazareth. And during their pilgrimage back to Jerusalem, Joseph and Mary lost track of the 12-year-old son and they found him in the temple. So these are the important events in the life of the Holy Family. At lahat iningatan iyon ni San Jose. After Mary, no saint is mentioned more frequently in the papal magisterium than Joseph her spouse. To appreciate fully St. Joseph, uh, St. Joseph's central role in the history of salvation, that's why Pope Pius IX declared him patron of the University Church. Then Pius XII proposed him as patron of workers and St. John Paul II, guardian of the Redeemer. He is also invoked as patron of happy death. So this document, dear brothers and sisters, ay napakalaga sa atin. Hindi lang sapat na malaman natin na siya ang asawa ni Maria. Siya ang tinuturing na ama ni Jesus. Pero lalo tigit sa lahat, sa kanya tayo lalapit upang uh, ingatan pangalagaan ng ating pamilya. Father Don Calloway had mentioned that we are experiencing a great crisis in the family. Walang ibang pwede umunawa <clears throat> sa pagiging ama, sa pagiging pamilya, kundi si San Jose. Because he is the head of the Holy Family. In the litany of St. Joseph, we, we pray terror of demons. St. Joseph, terror of demons. Ang mga pagsubok sa pamilya ay pagsira ng masama sa napakalagang elemento ng, ng society, ang pamilya. So, go to Joseph para ingatan ang ating pamilya. Well, going back to the document, dear brothers and sisters, we have the first distinctive uh, characters of St. Joseph, a beloved and tender, obedient father. St. Joseph, in fact, concretely expressed his fatherhood by making an offering of himself in love. A love placed at the service of the Messiah was growing to maturity in his home, writes Pope Francis, quoting, quoting his predecessor, St. Paul VI. And because of the role of St. Joseph at the crossroads between the Old and the New Testament, St. Joseph has always been venerated as a father by the Christian people. In him, Jesus saw the tender love of God, the one that keeps us accept our weakness because it is through and despite our fears. Because in St. In, in Joseph, Joseph uh, Jesus saw the tender love of God. The one that helps us accept our own weakness because it is through and despite our fears and failures and our weakness, the most divine designs are realized. Only tender love will save us from the snares of the accuser, emphasizes the pontiff. And it is by encountering God's mercy, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation, that we experience his truth and tenderness. Because we know that God's truth does not condemn us, but instead welcomes, embraces, sustains, and forgives us. That's the second article of this uh, document, Patris Corde. Joseph is also a father in obedience to God. With his fiat, he protects Mary and Jesus and teaches his son to do the will of the Father, called by God to serve the mission of Jesus. He cooperated in the great mystery of redemption, as St. John Paul II said, and is truly a minister of salvation.
His role in the history of salvation, we have mentioned the brothers and sisters. Kaya nga, mga kapatid, St. Joseph shared in the in the support, upkeeping, and safeguarding of the divine humanity of Jesus. The Father in heaven exercised His will and love towards His Son by giving on, on earth His foster father, who was to be the support, a protector, and His all. And for this purpose, He furnishes Him with the gracious heart of the Father, a heart full of love and self sacrifice. Now, what is your most unforgettable experience with, with your father? Siguro pag-isipan po natin, maunawaan din natin, lahat tayo may karanasan sa ating ama. Sa paraan ng pagbibisiplina, tanda ko, ang mother ko, malami ng sinasabi, pero ang tatay, isang sutsut lang, pag sinabi ng ama, tama na, tigil ang lahat. May kailangan ka. Hindi sasabing ilapit mo sa yung ina. Ilapit mo sa yung daddy. Tanong mo sa yung daddy. Sa kanya ka humingi. So, second distinctive character of St. Joseph, an accepting father. At the same time, Joseph is an accepting father because he accepted Mary unconditionally. An important gesture even today says Pope Francis, in our world where psychological, verbal, and physical violence towards women is so evident. But the bridegroom of Mary is also the one who, trusting in the Lord, accepts in his life even the events that he does not understand, setting aside his own ideas. And Joseph's brothers and sisters, Joseph's spiritual path is not one that explains but accepts. Kaya nga maunawa natin yung spiritualidad, katauhan ni San Jose, na hindi katulad ni Maria na paano mangyayari yung gayong ako'y dalaga. I offered my life, myself, to the Lord in the temple. Pero si Jose, after the explanation of the angel, that it was fruit of the Holy Spirit. Sinunod agad niya ang sinabi ng Angel. He does not accept for explanation. Dahil sa alam niyang kalooban niya agad yun ng Diyos. No? Uh, itong spiritual ito nito na tumatanggap, which does not mean that he is resigned. Instead, he is courageously and firmly proactive because with Holy Spirit's gifts of fortitude, and full of hope, he is able to accept life as it is, with all its contradictions and frustrations and disappointments. In practice, through St. Joseph, it is as if God were to repeat to us, do not be afraid. Because faith gives meaning to every event. However, happy or sad, and makes us aware that God can make flowers spring up from stony ground, Joseph did not look for shortcuts, but confronted reality with open eyes and accepted personal responsibility for it. Ito gusto ng Dios, gagawin ko ito. Maging asawa ni Maria, maging ama ni. Jesus. And for this re reason, he encourages us to accept and welcome others as they are without exception and to show special concern for the weak. So, how do you confront bilang ama, bilang ina? How do we confront our children? How do you confront your children as a father, as a parent? Kayo po makakapagsabi na bilang magulang. Well, kay San Jose, he was a creatively courageous father. He was, he has the example of of love, no? 
Patris Corde highlights the creative courage of St. Joseph, which emerges especially in the way he deals with difficulties. The carpenter of Nazareth, explains the Pope, was able to turn a problem into a possibility by trusting divine providence. Yun bang gusto ito ng Diyos? Naniniwala ako, hindi ako pababayaan ng Diyos. He had to deal with the concrete problems his family faced, problems faced by other families in the world, and especially those of migrants. In this sense, St. Joseph is the special patron of all those forced to leave their native lands because of war, hatred, persecution, and poverty. As the guardian of Jesus and Mary, Joseph cannot be other than the guardian of the church. For, of her motherhood and the body of Christ. Consequently, every poor, every needy, suffering or dying person, every stranger, every prisoner, every infirm person is the child whom Joseph continues to protect. From St. Joseph, like Pope Francis, we must learn to love the church and the poor. Kung papaano iningatan ni San Jose ang dalawang pinakamalagang yaman ng langit, si Jesus at si Maria. Kung paano iningatan ni San Jose ang misteryo ng pagkakatawang tao ng ating Panginoon. Tayo ang nakinabang bilang simbahan. No, iingatan niya ang simbahan. To love the church, our mother. At sino ang anak ng simbahan? Ang mahihirap, ang nangangailangan, ang inaapi, ang pinababayaan. So, when we love the church, if we love the church, we must also love His children, the poor. Sunod na katangian, the, the next character, distinctive trait of St. Joseph, Joseph is he is a father who teaches the value. He is a father who knows the dignity and joy of work. A carpenter who earned an honest living to provide for his family. St. Joseph also teaches us the value, the dignity, and the joy of what it means to Eat bread that is the fruit of one's own labor. This aspect of Joseph's character provides Pope Francis the opportunity to launch an appeal in favor of work, which has become a burning social issue, even in countries with a certain level of well-being. There is a renewed need to appreciate the importance of dignified work, of which St. Joseph is an exemplary patron the Pope writes. Napakinggan natin ang hamon ni Bishop uh, Broderick Pabilio na sana sa ating mga parokya magkaroon ng labor desk <coughs> na magkikreate tulungan yung mga nangangailangan ng trabaho. Because work, sabi sa document, he says, is a means of participating in the work of salvation. We are being saved when we work. So, and this work is an opportunity to hasten the coming of the kingdom, to develop our ta talents and abilities, and to put them at the service of society and God himself. Those who work, he explains, are cooperating with God himself and in some way become creators of the world around us. Pope Francis encourages everyone to rediscover the value, the importance, and the necessity of work for bringing about a new normal from which no one is excluded, especially in light of rising unemployment due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Pope calls everyone to review our priorities and to express our firm conviction that no young person, no person at all, no family should be without work. A father in the shadows centered on Mary and Jesus. Taking a cue from the shadow of the father, a book of uh, a book by Polish writer John Dobrasinski, Pope Francis describes Joseph's fatherhood of Jesus as the earliest earthly shadow 
of the Heavenly Father. God the Father in Heaven furnished Jesus on Earth, a foster father who was to be to Jesus a support, a protector, and his all. With the genuine heart of a father, a heart full of love and a heart full of self-sacrifice. Ang Ama sa Langit, bagamat siya ay Diyos, yung pagiging tunay na tao, hindi niya maaaring maibigay sa ating Panginoong Jesus o sa Batang Jesus. Kaya ibinigay kay Jesus sa banal na pamilya si Jose upang may, may bigay yung tunay na kalinga ng isang ama. Yung puso ng ama na may pagmamahal, yung puso ng ama na lilimutin ang lahat alang-alang sa kanyang anak. So the fatherly love of Joseph was the only stronghold that received and protected the divine child. Whatever a human son owes to a human father for all the benefits of his reading and support, Jesus owes to Joseph. He was to Jesus a foster father, teacher, and protector. In a word, Joseph is his all here below. I remember our professor, Father Francis Gustilo, told us, para bang si San Jose ang naging savior, ng savior, here and there. So, ngayon, dito papasok yung paano tayo ingatan ni San Jose <clears throat> para bilang simbahan. Mga kapatid, tayo ang nakinabang ng pag-iingat ni San Jose sa banal na pamilya upang yung grasya na ipinagkakaloob sa atin ng pagkakataon tao ng ating Panginoon sa paglapit natin kay San Jose. ipagkakaloob sa atin. Si San Jose laging nandiyan, nagsusumamo sa Diyos upang ibigay, ingatan, gabayan ang inang simbahan. St. Joseph continually carries on this mystery of incarnation and St. Joseph is its devoted servant by procuring graces for us from his son. One spiritual writer said, four things cost our downfall. A woman, a man, a tree, and a serpent. Four things restored us again. Mary, Christ, the cross, and Joseph. Joseph, above all, rendered his services to the divine humanity with a singular love. The child Jesus, by sympathy, by cooperation, and fatherly love. The, this was the heavenly, supernatural love in the heart of Saint Joseph. A love for, a love far deeper a love more powerful than any natural father's love could be. At iyon lahat ay ibinigay ni San Jose. He is the father in the shadows. The fatherhood of Joseph is the earthly shadow of the heavenly father. Makabuti siguro na tayo mismo sa bilang mga anak, write a letter to your father. O tayo, after hearing this distinctive traits of St. Joseph, name the traits that you need to, to be able to do God's will. Name the trait you need to have to do God's will. Points for meditation. How can I express my love and gratitude to my father? How can I be a beloved How can I be a tender and creatively courageous father or parent to my children? And this is the challenge for us, dear brothers and sisters. Tayo po bilang mga laiko, do I invoke St. Joseph as my patron and guide during these challenging times? Lalo tigit sa lahat, how can I deepen my devotion to him? 
towards the end of the document, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, gave us his daily prayer to St. Joseph, where he, uh, a prayer he used to, to pray for 40 years. And I conclude this conversation, this talk with you, regarding this uh, document, Patris Corde, with the Father's heart. Together we pray before St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph to us too. Show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace. Obtain for us mercy and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Amen. Maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po, Father Jason and Daya, Provincial Superior of the Oblates of St. Joseph. Alam niyo po, nakakatuwa po itong ating discussion ngayon sapagkat uh, marami po tayong natutunan kay Father Jason. Ang iba po ay uh, medyo matalinghaga na. Uh, si St. Joseph nga ay uh, the Savior of the Savior. Oh, mahirap yun, ano? Parang uh, kailangan ipaliwanag natin ng mabuti yun. And also, what it means to have some kind of a creative courage. Creative courage as a, as a person, as a father. Actually, kaya po natin na-invita si Father Jason sapagkat alam din natin na yung, itong buong year of St. Joseph ay aasa rin po tayo sa pamumuno ng mga oblato. Okay? And because yan po yung, kumbaga, sila ay ang subject matter experts. <laughs> so, naiintindihan po nila. At yung pati yung pagpapaliwanag, lalo na sa Tagalog, na maipararating yung mga mahalagang mga punto upang makilala natin ng mas malalim si San Jose sa mga buhay natin. Kaya po talagang excited po kami ngayon sa pagkatalam naming makaka, hindi lang makakada upang talag, makakatrabaho natin ang mga ang Oblates of St. Joseph, ang mga oblato, upang mas makilala natin si San Jose at uh, Ma makinabang din tayo sa napakarami nilang mga material. Marami po silang mga materials na naihanda na through the years na ngayon po ay uh, siguro talagang pakikinabangan po natin. Bago po tayo magtuloy pa sa iba pang mga mga talakayan, baka po mayroong gustong magtanong, challenging po to mga 183 po tayo ngayon dito. Hindi ko alam kung paano po ipapasilitate. Kung, kung meron po kayong tanong, baka po pwedeng i-chat na lang po ninyo. Isulat nyo muna sa chat box para naman ma, mabasa natin. Okay? At uh, para mabigyan din ng pagkakataong maka, makapag-isip muna si, si Father Jason kung uh, sasagutin nga niya. Kung hindi naman, assignment na lang. At maganda rin po yung ginawa ni Father na meron tayong mga reflections. So sana po sa mga itinanong niyang mga bagay sa ano bang trait o katangi na dapat tayo yan. Lumago pa bilang pag uh, lapit kay St. Joseph, eh, may mga reflection points po siyang ibinigay. Okay. So meron po bang mga tanong? Okay. Ilagay lang po nyo sa ating chat box para po tayo yan. Uh, Uh, magkaroon ng konting talakayan. Kaya kasi po itong ating event ngayon, ang tawag natin conversation. Si yes, Father Jason, meron po kayo. Yes, yes. Siguro usually laging itinatanong ng mga tao, Father, bakit po sa St. Joseph ay laging ang picture niya ay matanda. That's si Mama Mary, batang bata, magandang maganda. Well, uh, ang mga writers laging sinasabi niya to protect the perpetual virginity of the mother. Kaya kailangan ang imahe ni San Jose ay isang matanda. Di umano, di ba? Ang matanda ay wala, ang magagawang masama. Ano? So, doon sa pag-unawan doon natin titingnan kung bakit. Pero sa kultura, alam ni Bishop Pabilian, professor namin sa BBCS sa kultura ng mga kudyo 
ay at the age of uh, 12, 14, hanggang 16, nag-aasawa ang um, mga video. Kung bakit din naman ang tungkod ni San Jose ay may bulaklak, tapos tuyong-tuyo ang kanyang tungkod. Well, it's part of the election why Joseph was chosen as the spouse of the Blessed Mother. It was said, uh, maaaring ipinagkasundo na si Maria at saka si Jose. Of course, the priest during the time ay kailangang pahalagahan yung prophesia. So, all men belonging to the descendant, Ions of Apocryphal Books, all men belonging to the descendants of, uh, of David should bring isang tungkod sa templo at dadalhin doon. So lahat ng mga magigiting na laki nag-alay ng tungkod sa templo at uh, nakita doon na ang isang tungkod mula sa ang ni David ay may may bulaklak at may tum- may sumuloy. Siyempre, tinanong kong kanina yun. At yun ay, ang tungkod na yun ay galing kay, ay kay San Jose. So, doon natin maunawaan, ito'y tumutukoy pa rin sa being chased and ha, yung panuntunan ng Diyos para piliin ang karapat dapat na lalaki para kay, kay Maria. Meron po tayong sa katanong ngayon dito. Actually, dalawa na po sila. At uh, Sige, ako man, interesado rin dito sa tanong na to. Ay, pinag-uusapan dito yung isa sa mga litanya ni St. Joseph bilang the terror of demons. Yeah, no? Ang unang tanong, eh, kailan daw ba i-declare ng simbahan na si St. Joseph ay terror of demons? Ngunit uh, the more practical thing is that if we try to emulate and really uh, uh, go to the... Uh, uh, to St. Joseph for his protection, how can we okay, grow also? As ang pagkasabi dito, eh, how can we terrorize the demons? <laughs> so, hindi ko na, hindi naman siguro yun yung <laughs> eksaktong katanungan. Baka yung sabihin lang naman eh, paano naman tayo ding makaka, mag, mapoprotektahan ang ating mga sarili at talaga makakatugon sa, laban sa mga temptasyon. Okay? So, para Jason, tulungan mo kami. Lagi, lagi dyan namamayaan eh, ang... Uh gawin ng kalooban ng Diyos, katulad ng ginawa ni San Jose. Bunga ng kanyang panalangin, wala siyang hinangad kundi sundin ng kalooban ng Diyos. Sa bahagin niyan, we remember, uh, four times the angel appeared to 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 St. Joseph in the dream. Well, the greatest demon siguro, yung ipapapatay ni Herodes ang lahat ng mga bata. Ay kung hindi nakinig si, si, si San Jose, sinabi na hell, papuntang Egypto, then Egypto pabalik sa kanilang lugar, ay hindi natin alam ang maaaring mangyari sa ating Panginoong Jesus. Well, definitely Joseph is the terror of all demons. He was able to protect no, Jesus Christ, the head of the, 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 the child Jesus from uh, from heaven. Kaya ganun. So, sa bahay niyan, tayo ay maging mas madasalin kapag ka sinusubok ng Panginoon. No? Ngayon, tayo, dasal na ng dasal dati, magkaroon ng vaccine. Ngayon, binigay na ng vaccine. Hindi pa rin tayo pupunta sa simbahan. 50% na. Yun, practical na ganun. Sana we have to actively participate now in the church. Baka makilala na tayong nasanay sa online-online. Huwag po ganun. No? Iba yung misang tayo tinatanggap ang ating Panginoon sa Eucharistia. Iba yung misang tayo nagdadasal ng sama-sama bilang si Bahan. And uh, para bang sinasabi, uy, sinasabi sa atin ng San Jose, Huwag kayong matakot, iingatan ko kayo, katulad ng pag-iingat ko sa banalasan na, na pamilya, iingatan ko kayo bilang simbahan. Iingatan ko kayo laban sa masama. Mayroon pa po ilang katanungan dito tungkol dun sa consecration or national consecration to St. Joseph on May 1. Mamaya po siguro masasagot natin yung 
yung medyo detalye niyan. Pero meron pong suggestion dito about can we have the consecration of St. Joseph be a mandatory teaching during the seminar in the church taken by couple getting married before granting parang our marriage and this will be a great help in our marriages. Uh, totoo po yan. Actually, nilapitan po ako ni Archbishop Gilbert Gaxera para gumawa po ng programa para sa mga pamilya. Kasabay po nito ang pagdiriwang ng, hindi uh, ko alam kung 10th year o 5th year ng Amores Laetitia. So gumagawa na po tayo ng programa diyan para uh, palalimin, pagyamanin, ang uh, buhay pamilya kasama sa San Jose. Paternity of St. Joseph and uh, programa po sa mga pamilya ito. Kami po ay humihingi lamang ng tulong sa mga uh, couples para ganap na maisayos itong programa ito. At uh, sa ngalan po ng Arsubispo ng Lipa ay ito po tinatrabaho. Tinatrabaho na po sa aming oblis sa St. Joseph. Gandang balita po yan sapagkat uh, sa March 19 po ay magsisimula din yung year of Amoris Leticia. Amoris Leticia. Uh-huh. Opo, at ka, kasama din po ang mga family life uh, communities ay magkakaroon. Magkakatagpo yung pagpapa, uh, lago ng pamilya doon sa pagpapatibay naman ng pagiging ama ng tahanan. So maganda po yan. At uh, alam ko po, po na ang Copos for Christ din po. Meron silang mga programa dyan na sinasabing family is a gift. Yan. So tutulungan na lumago ang mga pamilya at patitibayin din yung spiritual leadership ng mga fathers. So tayo po yung magtutuloy na. Meron ng Father Jason, maraming maraming salamat. Kami salamat po din po. Nilulugod na nakasama ka namin ngayon. Uh, magbibigil lang po kami ng konting mga announcement at pagkatapos sa hinga namin ng pang, pang, pangwakas mensahe si Bishop Roderick Pabilio. Okay. Bago ko po mag uh, bago po ako magtawa, magbigay ng announcement, gusto ko lang malaman dito po ba yung mga uh, galing sa Archdiocese of uh, the uh, Dagu Lingayen Dagupan, mga seminarista daw, sabi Circus 3, seminarians daw yung nakikinig. So Pwede po ba kayong magparamdam? Diyan po ba kayo kahit palakpak man? Ah, sila Gerald, yan. Kayo, kayo po ba yan? So maraming maraming salamat at uh, alam namin na marami, marami din kayong natutunan dito. Uh, asahan namin kayo mga seminarista uh, na magtulong-tulong para maitaguyod Year of St. Joseph. Mga announcements na po. Okay. First things first. Yan yung mga dapat ganyan na nga. Matuloy po namin hinihikayat ang mga kasamahan natin na gamitin sa kanila pang araw-araw na panalangin yung ginaga- ginagawang pag, uh, papaliwanag ni Bishop Roderick Pabilio sa, sa kanyang YouTube channel na First Things First. Ako po eh, sin- tinuroan ko magdasal yung anak ko eh. Sabi ko sa umaga, ito ang dadasalin mo, ito pakikinggan mo. Ay natutuwa po ako lumalapit sa akin yung anak kong lalaki binata to ha. Sabi, ganun pala ang nangyari sa creation ano. Yeah, sorry matuliwan ako. Meron pa lang dalawang version. <laughs> Kasi na kahit bata na intindihan ano ang ibig sabihin noon at paano magkakaroon din ng relasyon sa buhay natin. So sa mga kasamahan po namin mga like ko patuloy po nating palaganap itong pag gamit sa ating pang-araw-araw na panalangin ito nga uh, first things first na araw-araw na nakikita natin sa YouTube na sa pagtuturo ni Bishop Pabilio ng mga komentaryo ng first reading. Yan po ang ating unang uh, announcement. Pangalawa po, nag-announce na kami tungkol sa Walk for Life. Yung pangatlo po ay uh, talagang itutuon natin doon sa National Consecration uh, to St. Joseph on May 1. Yun po ang idiniklara ng Catholic Bishops Conference for the entire uh, CBCP. At para po makapaghanda tayo niyan, yung pong 33 days na preparasyon ay magsisimula ng March 30. Yan po, March 30. Ang pwede pong gamitin, isa sa mga pwedeng gamitin libro dyan ay yung ang libro ni Father Don Calloway na ma- magiging available po Okay, sa iba't ibang mga uh, 
lugar. Andiyan po ang Marian Fathers na po pwede po niyong lapitan. I think Father Marius uh, is with us this afternoon. Nandiyan po ang Marian Solidarity okay, na nakasama rin po natin. Nandito po ang Catholic Book Center na, na, na meron din sila mga supply. At uh, magkakaroon din po ng isang special limited opportunity ang LICO na mag-distribute uh, ng copies dito at very limited lang po yung hawak naming mga uh, kopya. Kaya po kung gusto po nyo magpa-reserve okay, ng mga librong ito, ay alam lang po nyo, uh, i-emailan nyo si Joseph po okay, para po kayo ay makapag-reserve. One very practical thing, ang pinihingi po namin kung magpa-reserve kayo, magpa-reserve kayo ng maaga at kung maglilista naman kami, maglilista kami ng order ninyong pasampu-sampu. Ano ibig sabihin? By tens. Kasi po napakahirap po naman yung paisa-isa kayong order, papadeliver pa nyo, no? So, kung maaari kayo maka-order ng pasampu-sampu, papadala namin sa inyo yan para mas mura ang, ang handling at tulungan nyo po kaming i-distribute naman ito sa mga kasamahan ninyo sa iba't ibang mga diocesan councils of the laity. So, yun po yung hinihint namin. Bago po mangyari yan, ay meron po kami mga iba pang mga announcements kung paano po natin namang sabay-sabay na masisimulan yung ating uh, day one ng ating 33-day preparation na mangyayari po sa March 30. Ngunit kung kayo po yung nagsimula na o oh, ayaw naman yung sumabay, okay, eh, meron naman pong ibang 33 days sa buong taon. Kaya lang po, maganda sanang sa uh, May 1 ang magkaroon tayo ng pagkakataong magkasama-sama makapaghanda dito sa ating uh, 33 day preparation for a national consecration to St. Joseph on okay uh, May 1 So sa mga diocese and councils of the laity lapitan po niyo ang mga bishops niyo ang mga kaparian tanong lang po niyo ano pa ang balak natin ano pa ang plano natin okay para po talagang uh, sabihin niyo po balita po namin nakatanggap na kayo ng libro paano po natin gagamitin yeah. so pag-usapan po yan para po talagang ma-develop ma natin itong ating 33 day preparation for the national consecration on day 1 last announcement po okay um sa february 27 po ay yung panibago nating uh, conversation at ang atin naman po maging panauhin ay isang uh, Doctor of Molecular Biology and Doctor of Moral Theology na si Father Nicanor Ostriaco, Dominican, na nakapagsalita na po sa Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines na magbibigay din po sa atin ng mga updates. Kasi mag-iisang buwan na rin po bago ngayon kung ano ang update sa mga sa mga pangyayari sa, sa development ng vaccination at inoculation program ng, ng mundo at ng simbahan. At makikinig din po tayo sa isang local naman, isang lay doctor who's a infectious disease uh, specialist, si Dr. René Bulyaser, okay Para po makakita tayo ng uh, iba't ibang perspektibo ng doctor of molecular biology, doctor of theology, doctor of uh, uh, infectious diseases. So makita po natin yan paano po tayo makakatugon dito sa hamon sa atin ng vaccination program. So yun po ang ating uh, uh, mga announcement para po sa hapong ito. And uh, with that, okay, uh, my time here is 3.39. Pagkatapos po ng ating closing prayer ay magpapalabas lang po ako ng isang video pa okay, upang i- Ipiparinig naman sa inyo ang paanyaya pa ng Archdiocese of Manila tungkol sa Mission Cross uh, at sa Mission Song bilang badge of mission natin sa taong uh, 500 years of Christianity. Okay. With that, uh, maraming maraming salamat Father Jason. Maraming salamat po sa lahat na nakinig sa atin ngayon. Uh, I turn uh, back to Bishop Pabilio kung meron po kayo pang final words. Okay. So maraming salamat yun for hosting us and for organizing this conversation. Salamat kay Father Jason sa kanya pagpapaliwanag. At sana basahin niyo po yung Patris Corde. Maganda po yung aklat. Hindi naman masyado mahaba. No? 
para mas mapalalim pa nating kaalaman. No, at uh, tulad ng sinabi ni Father June, ah, ni, <laughs> ni Brother June, may uh, consecration po tayo sa May 1, pero mayroon din tayong consecration of family sa December 8. No? Pagkahandaan po natin. Alam niyo po yung consecration na hindi magic. Na na-consecrate na, consecrate na tayo, okay na ang lahat. No? Kaya ito yung kailangan natin ipaghanda. No, consecration is a grace na makakonsecrate tayo so bibigyan tayo ng grasya no sa tulong ng panalangin ni uh, Saint Joseph pero at the same time it's a, it's a commitment. Consecration ibig sabihin consecrated na tayo, nakatalaga na tayo. Kaya dapat uh, talagang convinced tayo sa consecration natin na, na nakatalaga tayo na sumunod sa virtues ni Saint Joseph. No, kaya dapat natin siyang makilala. Kaya maganda nga at meron tayong libro na tumutulong sa atin araw-araw ng pagnilay tungkol kay San Jose, pagkilala sa kanya, at araw-araw pagdadasal na inihanda natin para pagdating na consecration ay hindi na tayo. Pero tulad ng sinabi nga ni Brother June, hindi lang naman tayo maghahabol sa May 1. Uh, kung mayroon na kayo, pwede naman kayo maghahabol sa May 9, uh, March 19 o any, any other day na maghanda. You can also organize your own groups na mag-consecrate tayo on this particular day. So, 33 days before, ihanda natin na ating sarili. Pwede naman ganun, no, by groups. At ngayon, may Zoom tayo. That can also be done. Kaya mag-consecrate kayo sa, sa August. So, by July, magsimula kayo sa group. Pwede naman by Zoom tayo araw-araw na mag, uh, mag-usap tayo. Uh, sabay-sabay tayo makinig, sabay-sabay tayo magdasal. At pwede natin gawin yan. No? At lalong-lalo na sa pagdating ng family sa December 8. Now, sana yung mga family sa tinihanda natin. Ang ganda ng buong pamilya ay consecrated sa pagiging uh, sa proteksyon ni San Jose sa pamilya natin. Kaya maraming salamat po and uh, we want to see you again next week. Hindi tayo magkikita pero sumunod lang kayo sa ating mga Facebook, sa YouTube. No? At pero sa May, uh, February 27, itong conversation uli natin para po mas talong mamula tayo sa manangyayari sa ating dipunan. At sa uh, bago tayo umalis, gusto ko lang ipaanyaya sa inyong lahat na ipromote po natin yung pag-register ng mga voters. No, kasi registration ng voters uh, hanggang uh, September 30 ito. Kaya ngayon pa lang, lalo na mga kabataan, ng mga kasama nyo, sa parokya, sa pamilya, o sa inyong mga grupo na hindi pa naka Naka-register, magpa-register na no, para pagdating ng eleksyon, ang boses natin ay marinig naman. Okay? So maraming salamat, Marjun. Bishop, can you give us a final blessing po? Okay. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po, Your Excellency Bishop Roderick Pabilio. At sa lahat po ng Excellencies na kung nandito ngayon ay hindi ko na bate. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo at sa mga kaparean. And again, to our beloved lay people, uh, kami po, habang kayo po sumasama sa amin sa mga linggo-linggo, buwan-buwan na mga conversation, lumalakas po ang loob namin. Nagpapasalamat po ang kabuuan, ang board ng laiko sa inyong pagtugon uh, sa aming mga paanyaya. At sana po mat Maging isang katotohanan itong sinasabi nating celebrate as one in 2021. Celebrating the gift of Christianity, celebrating the gift of unity, and celebrating the gift of mission. Maraming salamat po at pakinggan po natin ang ating final video. Ako po si Bishop Roderick Pabilio, Apostolic Administrator ng Archdiocese of Manila. Sa darating na Sabado, February 6, ay formal nating bubuksan sa Archdiocese of Manila 
ang pagdiriwang natin ng 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Kinabukasan nito, February 7, araw ng linggo, ay sa ating mga parokya naman ito gagawin. Magandang tandaan na ang focus ng taon na ito ay Missio Agentes, Mission to the Peoples, ang ating misyon sa sambayanan. Sa pagbubukas natin ng 500 year celebration, ito ay gusto nating pagtuunan ng pansin. Kaya may dalawang bagay na gagawin tayo upang maalaala natin na may misyon tayo. Una, magsuot tayo ng ating 500 years mission cross. Ibabalik natin ang ating magandang tradisyon bilang mga katoliko na magsuot ng krus. Ito ay sagisag ng identity natin at pananampalataya kay Jesus. Pero ngayong taon, ito ay magiging tanda ng ating pagtugon sa misyon. The cross will be our badge of mission. We give our yes to mission. Makikita natin sa Mission Cross ang pangalan ni Jesus na nakasulat sa Roman alphabet at sa ating sinaunang baybayin. Ito ay simbolo ng pagtatagpo ng ating kultura at pananampalatayang Kristiyano na ang simbahan ay kaagapay sa pagbunlad ng buhay ng tao. Nakasulat naman sa likod ang pangalan ni Maria ang ating mahal na ina na hindi mawawala sa dibusyon ng mga Pilipino. Sisikapin ng ating mga parokya at mga komunidad na ipalaganap ang ating Mission Cross. Maibahagi ito lalo na sa mga mahihirap nating mga kapatid upang maramdaman nilang kasama sila sa 500 year celebration. Let us bring back this beautiful tradition let us wear our mission cross and give our yes to mission. Ikalawa, aawitin natin bilang recessional song sa lahat ng misa ang ating official mission song na We Give Our Yes composed by our very own Father Carlo Magno Marcelo at inamit ni Jamie Rivera. Ang kanta na ito ay magpapaalaala na dapat sa atin ng ating pagtugon sa misyon. We give our yes to mission. Kaya ang tawag natin dito ay mission song. Dahil tuwing aawitin natin ito, dapat mapukaw sa damdamin natin na tayo ay tinatawag ni Jesus na tumugon sa kanyang misyon. At ano ang tugon natin? We give our yes. Sa pagbubukas natin sa Archdiocese of Manila, hinihikayat ko ang lahat na gawin ang dalawang bagay na ito. Suotin ang ating mission cross at awitin ang ating mission song. Kung gagawin ang lahat ito, magiging mabunga lalo na ang mga darating pang mga activities sa isang taong pagdiriwang natin ng 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Huwag kalimutan, i-like, i-follow, at i-share ang official Facebook page ng 500 years of Christianity Archdiocese of Manila. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. <music>